Protobuf was created around 2004 and open sourced four years later. It's a data serialization framework that is used even today. Protobuf was essential for Google to scale as a company. The basic problem, say you have this struct. An integer for the user ID and a nested struct with a string for the name and an integer for a user's age. How do you write this to disk? In runtime it might be represented by this layout in memory. Simply dumping this to disk doesn't work. Different systems have different pointer layouts, different ways integers are encoded. Also, if you add or remove fields, this memory layout will change completely. So what about using something like JSON or XML? Doesn't work either. Even back in 2004, Google was storing and processing tens of petabytes of data per day. XML and JSON are not efficient enough and would be incredibly expensive formats to use. Google did use to create custom serializers for each type of data, but this becomes error prone and there's no way to share new optimizations between types. To solve this problem, they developed protocol buffers. To use this, first create your type description. We will do the user example earlier in the video. Create user.proto, set syntax equals proto3, add a message user personal data definition containing an optional name string and an optional int32 age. Add a message user with an optional int64 for the user ID and an optional user personal data. When the protobuf compiler serializes it, it will generate a list with key value pairs. We have one pointing to user ID, two pointing to the user personal data message, in which one points to name and two points to age. In TypeScript, we first tell the bundler to generate code for the proto. Import the proto into our TypeScript file, call user.create to create the user proto. In the call, set the user ID to your value and personal to user personal data.create, where you specify that data as well. User is now your user proto. You can then encode that into bytes with user.encode, assigning it to user writer. Then to decode, you call user.decode. Then we print the protos and check that they are equal, which they are. If you want to use this for RPCs, I recommend one of two options. Either base64 encode the bytes, or use gRPC which generates the RPC server and clients for you. But that was all about protobuf, now go out and describe your data in a scalable way.